okay we'll continue with this video now in this video you are looking at a bulk carrier which is a very large size so it generally carries only specific cargoes other cargoes uh, you don't get this much of quantity so if you are carrying full cargo you generally have only that coal iron ore something like that cargoes okay good 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 okay dog no problem Okay. I will always know. By the way, uh, I must explain you the system. When you join, you get automatically logged in in our Zoom classes. Okay, it is recorded, including your uh, Mac ID. Everything is recorded. And when you join, you must every day morning before eight o'clock, you should log in to Moodle website. Okay, because you are supposed to be there. Now Aditi is late. One seven four is late. This is the last day you are coming late. Next lecture I close. Okay, we start here. So this one is a special ship. Okay, like what this chief officer was telling you, you have to be very careful because unequal weights can break the ship in pieces. Okay, <clears throat> it will not happen. It will start with the bad damages first, very bad damages. But today, these large ships which are made for these types of cargoes, you know, they are uh, specially made where they can load the full hold in one go. So that's okay. Later on, we will know by the time you will start understanding what we are talking about. Okay, let's start. No sir, no. This is my life, sir. So I never, I never regret regarding my profession. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chief. Have a safe trip. Have a safe operation. Bye. One of the most critical operations on board is the inspection of the ballast water tank. This is the confined space, and uh, there really can be a lack of the oxygen. In order to fix this problem, we are using the gas detector and then closed entry procedure. This is the special checklist. Calibration should be done uh, at the fresh air, so we cannot use our standard safety shoes. We are using the rubber boots. So we are inside of the ballast tank, and uh, what actually we have to inspect here. Uh, first of all, is structural integrity and coating condition. As you can see here, there are some problems with coating which uh, later should be rectified. The next important thing, what we are going to check, the anode protection. Uh, this element is designed to prevent uh, the steel of the vessel from the early decomposing. Uh, another very important thing is uh, uh, deposit of mass. Uh, we should monitor the condition of welding steam. Every bulk area is the very long and very wide steel vessel, in fact, it's very fragile. The welding seems all the time experiencing the, experiencing the uh, dynamic and static stress. Unfortunately, by means of uh, inspections, uh, like we are doing now, it's not possible to inspect all welding seams because there are hundreds of kilometers, I would say, of welding seams, which cannot be surveyed. This is actually the smallest tank it can accommodate uh, 1,000 cubic meters of the ballast, so it's very small. We are going to the double bottom water tank, placed below sea level. It's more difficult space. Okay, we are finally down bottom line of the ship. We are about 15 meters below the sea level. Uh, as you can see, the mud deposits on the double bottom part is quite high. We 
have completed our inspection, I decided to take the interview from uh, my today's assistant. This is ABJ Lelibios and ask his opinion about the life of Simon, about the Simon's life. So tell me, Jay, uh, what do you think about the profession of the Simon? Okay, sir. Uh, I think the uh, life of Simon is uh, very hard stuff, not very easy. You know, uh, some guys, some people say, that ah, Simon, it's uh, too much money. The Simon's job is very hard, very hard. And uh, our life is uh, always in danger. See, uh, very far from home. Sometimes if uh, there's some emergency, we don't have doctor on board, so we need to keep safe. And uh, how do you feel about the th such a thing that you are spending, uh, let's say, 70 to 80 percent of your life on board? So, <clears throat> about that, that's true. Many shipwrights spend their life on the sea uh, because uh, to provide, to provide uh, a needs for their family, you no. Know? Because in some country, in like our uh, country, there's an uh, easiest way to build and give uh, support to our family is to become a seafarer. Okay, uh, what is your plans for future uh, for next 10-20 years? Maybe if I have a good health, I want to become a... Uh, like you sir, that's my uh, dream. So I need to build and study. So as now, I'm here uh, working as a uh, rating, so I need to study more. But when you will get your officer's license? Maybe after I completion my uh, papers, because uh, in Philippines, uh, very hard to take uh, examination. Too much paper, and need also such a big money, like uh, investment. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going out. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, it was not easy. The next portion comes. This is the recreation room, the space where uh, crew can have a cigarette, spend some time together, uh, sing some karaoke, watch some movies, and this is the common space when the crew spending its time. Normally the people come in here by the evening. This is the officer's mess room. One mess room is for the officers, another is for ratings. And uh, the next place is the galley. Here is Look the galley how clean of, uh, it is, huh? of this vessel. This is the place where uh, all the food is cooked. And uh, if you go further, after the <coughs> galley, you can see the other space, provision area. It normally has three most important compartments. This area is uh, designed for dry provision. More important part is the refrigerator rooms. This is the vegetable room. So here we are holding the wedges in order to prepare our food. The next is the uh, diary room. And this is the fish room. Uh, the fish and meat always stored separately. And this is the meat room, the places where we are storing the meat, chicken, and so on. Maintaining the temperatures in the refrigerator room is very important. And the failure of the refrigeration plant to keep the temperature is the very big problem. So as you can see, this panel is controlling the temperatures of the refrigeration plant. And in case the temperature goes up, uh, we have an immediate alarm. This vessel uh, has a seven decks and sometimes it takes you a lot of power in order to move between decks. So for this situation, the vessel is equipped with elevator. Let's get into this. We go to the deck B. And I want to show you one more place. This is the cabin the living quarters of the crew. Uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, normally it has the place where we store our clothes, the table, sometimes fridge, sofa, the bed and uh, toilet with the shower. Here we can see the, our ship. Below our legs, 
we have a navigational bridge. This is the wheelhouse, and wheelhouse is situated on the highest point, so you have a best review of what is going on around the ship. This is the bridge wing, the wings of the bridge, and uh, the place, especially when you are berthing the ship and uh, observing any other critical operation, the officer, pilot, or captain is coming to this position and observing how it is going on. And also from uh, this bridge, we can access the wheelhouse itself. From where we are navigating the vessel. Here we have all necessary equipment in order to make a safe navigation. The charts, by the way, we don't have any more paper charts. The radars, the radars is most important part which allows us to see in the night time. The steering wheel. This is how it looks like. Many people imagine that it should be something huge, made of wood, but no. And also, one big stereotype that captain is uh, personally steering the vessel, it's not true. Normally, it's done by able seamen. And controls, controls, controls. Radio equipment everything we need for communication and uh, this is the conventional uh, radio equipment which called GMDSS and this is the chart table normally uh, the name of the chart table means that there is a chart now we're using only the electronic charts for the moment only the paperwork has been done here by the way here we can see the our officers which are, uh, I believe, they are changing the watch. No, what are you doing now? From six o'clock until now. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Paperwork. Ah, okay. So today is 30 of June, yeah. and you are preparing the documents, the files, the reports. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Okay. How long you spend in the sea? How many years? Uh, about uh, 10 years. Second officer, and uh, you? Almost 15 years, and stay in this company almost running seven years. That's it. Uh, we have made the. Uh, excursion in all the compartments of the vessel. Uh, I was going to take the interview from the captain of the ship, the captain Alexander, and ask him a couple of questions. And uh, since he's very busy with some of his duties, fortunately, I'm also the captain and spent uh, a lot of years commanding the similar type of the vessels. So I can uh, ask the questions to myself and say something. The seaman's life is not easy, you know, and uh, up to 80% of our lifetime we are spending in the sea. Sometimes it seems that we should not do that and this life is too difficult and there are no enough benefits to do so. But I don't know how does it work, but most of the seamen, after they're coming back home, after two, one or two months rest, they are thinking about the coming back to the vessel because it seems like this is their life and this is how they are living in their lifestyle. I wish you good luck. Thank you very much for watching the video. You can uh, click finger up, uh, you can subscribe. I want to say thank you to the crew of the Motor Vessel Lady Charm and uh, to the, my assistant. Today is the operator Jay, let me show you. This is the Jay, he was assisting me today. So thank you very much ladies and gentlemen, see you online, bye. So, okay, we saw one ship now, okay? Now, there is a lot of variety on ships, depend on types of ship. Now, in this case, uh, like Captain, the one who was talking to you, looks like uh, Russian or Croatian. And the crew was Filipino. I mean, officers and crew were Filipinos. Uh, other ships have got mixed one, like Captain will be one country, Chief Officer, another the second officer, third one, chief engineer, fourth one, and so on. So now we are going to go on the next one. That is a container ship. This was the bulk carrier. So did you like what you saw? Tell me first. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. See, our this yes, video, sir. this video is always available. You want to show it to your friends, parents, anybody. Show it to them. So they will also realize that, okay, you all are not going somewhere in a darkness where you don't know much about it. 
these things give you idea a fairly decent idea about what is uh, like a ship later on there will be variations but that is part of the life isn't it let me see who is asking something seven questions no oh, is it yes they are all saying like the but share it with your friends and all so that everybody gets idea what you are doing now we are going to go on the next one visit to a container ship because container ships are the fast ones which generally uh, do about 10 the busier ones okay and they don't have dust and all they only have containers so let us go on that they are modern ships Okay, here I am going to take you directly to YouTube. Are you committing a mistake of taking stock market advice without checking past performance? Respect your hard-earned money and take a wise decision. Visit multibaggershares.com where you will get multibagger stock I'm advice not advertising. with a transparent okay. show of our past performance. See how the port looks. It's huge, but you think it is like a Lego blocks. Excuse me, sir. Please play from the beginning. Yeah, this is going from beginning only. This film is made like this. Okay, sir. You know this port what you are looking at it is huge huh? you can't walk in it's that big now each box can be as much as uh, 30 tons 30 metric tons Cover. They are closing hatch cover. Now this car, uh, other ships have got different types of hatch covers. Here you have got different types. Temporary storage of hatch cover. Okay, now this was one of the short ones 
YouTube, YouTube, I go back to TA my learning. Okay. Now there are enough of videos on YouTube. Enough of them. Okay. You can keep on spending time if you feel like uh, feeling what is the ship. Container ship operations are quite different than other ships. They don't stay in port that much. They carry massive cargoes. They are always full. Okay. Now we start the next chapter. What is a ship? Okay. Now you all are supposed to be reading all this. Okay. <clears throat> How do we make a ship? This is what we are discussing here. Because it's okay. We decided it's a good business. Now I want to make a ship. It is not like buying your mobile phone, you know. The, because what happens, you have a ready-made models available. You decide, I want this, I want that. That model is better than this. Ships are designed. It's unlike cars or like a standard planes you see. There they make in a, in a something like a mass production in a sense. Not exactly mass is not correct word. But it's the same models are produced in large number. Whereas on ships, ships are designed very specifically for a specific route, specific cargoes in the future. Sometimes it also happens before you have built a ship, it is chartered for next 20 years. And that's why you build a ship, why you already have a business. So, okay, those are the things which you will learn later on. Now, there is something in... Uh, management okay or for learning principles uh, one husband and five wives thumb rule now okay I know nobody will have five wives but it is called one wife one husband and five wives thumb rule the reason is for anything that you do you should have certain questions one is how how anything you tell me how Okay, I have to have that question first. How? How do I do this? Very good. Next. Then comes all the W's. I will say I want a ship. Okay, the next one will ask. Next wife is asking where you are going to go. So, in ocean, wherever there is cargo for transport. Very good. The next answer, next wife is asking I want to use it for why do you want to use it? I'm going to say that yes, I want to make business and make money. Of course, the next one. When? So that will be as soon as possible. Then there will be always somebody who is going to say who? Who is going to look after the project? So I'm going to tell you yes, somebody will have to look after the project. Then it's like uh, one husband is saying and all wives are demanding what is this, what is that, ye kon karega, wo kon karega, and so on. But I did not say it. Somebody else has said it, okay? So don't blame me. Now, suppose there are children involved in this family. One husband, five wives. What will happen? You started a project. Start business by owning a ship. Now, everybody has got all sorts of demands. Now, husband is going to start asking the questions. How big ship you want? What will you carry in it? Tumne to both bol diya. Hum carry karenge cargo. What cargo? Okay, ship kha milta hai. Where do you get it? Where do you buy it? What about license? What about daily expenses? Who will drive it? What is the cost, maintenance cost per year? Is there any bank loan available? What about the toll taxes and all, all sorts of taxes and so on? There will be many questions. Of course, some of it may be sounding the way when you ask for a new mobile phone. These questions were asked to you by your parents, probably. Some of them at least. Okay. I'm sorry, right or wrong? Tell me. Right, sir. 
right now yes. father will ask some questions mother will ask some questions right that is goes with mobile phone but anyway for everything there is a similar list whether it is the phone whether it is a ship and other thing now about ship there will be even more question what will be length breadth and depth what should be the power of the engine what should be the loading capacity how much cargo it can carry what will be the speed what happens if there is accident how about loading and discharging who is going to do how easy it will be to operate suppose the driver is going to take this for a long distance is there any comfort for him or he is going to sleep on the road then what type of cargo it will carry how will it be safe from fire there will be no fire and so on there will be questions so it becomes a complex subject owning a ship or buying a ship becomes complex subject. now you are going to need experts because you realize the number of questions can go on and one person obviously cannot do the job so you have got more number of people involved different teams are involved each team is given very specific job then there are researches there are uh, you know the research teams contact the ports they are going to visit they get involved with finding out what port is likely to do in next 25 years everybody has got about 20 years plans huh? every industry every company a good company i'm talking has got at least next 20 years plan and including balance sheets prepared uh, you know balance sheet prepared means on projections so it's a complex one now what we need to do is too many things are there commercial aspects are there so let us concentrate only on something that we can manage construction let's take construction how do you construct the ship so i want to take my ship to this place that place that place why because i have worked out in future is going to work out very well there so i need to find out what facility is there can my ship go in is that port deep enough what are the their berth dimension my ship is 400 meters long and their berth is 200 meters long how will i operate right my ship draft is say 20 meters and the water available is 10 meters so it is not suitable it is like you know you take a big truck and try to put in a small lane it will not go in something like that so you have to do the studies there then you will work out economics how much freight you will get how much you can afford to spend on fuel if you spend so much on a fuel then how much speed you will get so what will be delivery time and so on you know means we always as indians we are always little fascinated with fuel consumption more than other nationalities then will it have a space proper space to store and secure cargo in a safe manner you can't have cargo damaged during transit like you see that happening once in a while with amazon flipkart that your parcel comes damaged that should not happen now that handling damages or whether there is storage damages whatever it is but we don't want damages so we make sure that ship must be made properly so that there is a proper space now again the my main dream is i want to carry maximum cargo maximum so the calculations must be done properly to keep ship lightest within those dimensions because dimensions are decided length so much breadth so much depth so much now i want it lightest and it should be strong so okay, i'm not going to say it can not be strong you make it light and all but it has to be strong so these are my demands so now we come to that old guy which one picture you saw archimedes who ran naked to the king shouting eureka eureka yeah that's the same gang you know i have mentioned it earlier all these guys pythagoras euclid plato archimedes now this this guy is the worst one okay i'll uh, 
Khwarezmi. Uh, I think he was from Iraq or something. He made algebra. And then there are many more in this gang anyway. So, they gave the theories. We are lucky we deal only with the law of flotation in my class. And you will be dealing with some of them anyway in other subjects. And don't worry, all of them look same with all the beards and all that. For some reason, they all look same to me. Okay. Now, we got these points here. One, two, three, four points. Five. One or two are about designing. That means deciding the dimensions. Point three is about interior designing because you are going to keep cargo inside the ship. So, it is interior design. Four is about our greed to earn maximum amount of money. That's why I say I want ship light. You know, when the weight is light, so when the price will also come down. But anyway, I am calculating I want maximum cargo, maximum money. Point five is about long term view. Kitna sal tikega. Huh? Longevity. Which probably you all don't bother much about most of the things. But you will notice this difference. You know, when you buy phone, mobile phone, you expect it to last maybe one year is good enough. Okay. Your parents buy phone, they are thinking, will it last 3 years and 5 years? So, same difference. Then, theory in theory, the total weight of the ship is supported by buoyancy provided by water. Now, you have got total weight is ship's weight plus cargo weight. And, like yesterday I mentioned you, there is also the unused amount which is kept always as a reserve, that is reserve buoyancy. So, I want to make ship's weight zero. Never mind, it's not theoretically possible, but I want to make it then I have paisa hi paisa, mala mala, right? But, that's not possible. So, we have to work out and know what material to be used. Somebody will say, use aluminum, it's lighter, agreed here, but there are technological problems. The cost of aluminum will be higher. If I make a ship with, uh, say, aluminum, it will cost me $100 million. If I make it with steel, it will cost me maybe $30 million. So, we look at different things. The maintenance, this, that, all the factors are added. up. Now, don't compare ships from different uh, backgrounds. Like, for example, naval ships are much stronger than merchant ships, much stronger. They are designed even to ram. They don't have to worry about cargo weight. They need to worry about war and the minimum damage should happen. So, they are made with thicker plating. They, everything is different. They don't have to worry about drafts and all. They are designed differently. Their roles are different. There is no comparison with the uh, merchant navy and uh, say any navy. So don't mentally don't compare it because they are entirely different fields. Only common thing we have got is both are called ships. Their ships are very strong. Not only that, the stability is different. There is more what we call static stability for them. We have got dynamic stability. So anyway, for us what happens is we want to make ships strong, means strong enough to withstand storms and all under normal conditions, the strongest storms in 25 years, 50 years, 100 years, whatever we know and based on that reading, we design a ship. But we keep it as light as possible because we don't expect anybody is going to put torpedoes and bombs on us. Because if that happens, there is a good chance you may sink. Of course, it happened during those Gulf Wars, much before you were born, much before. Uh, in Gulf Wars, uh, they tried to sink the ships. Uh, very few ships sank. Most of them had damages because merchant ships are also designed to withstand certain damages. So, they didn't know it. They had damages which got repaired and all. And then I will tell you one fascinating story afterwards. Okay. Just keep it in mind. One of the days I will tell you one fascinating story. That ship is still around and used as a storage tank or maybe just scrap now. Okay. Now, 
what is a ship normally we know that you have to make it strong everything so what we actually do is uh, it is like uh, have you ever made a bamboo lantern anybody has made bamboo lantern made out of bamboo stick you know cut it and all anybody has done ha huh? come on nobody no sir nobody has done our days we used to do it you know actually because what happened those days uh, indians and chinese were not friendly we didn't get anything from china and diwali time we used to make this curtain basically most common one was star so anyway why i asked you because in that case it's easier what we do how do you make ship first we do interior design completely so i know i'm going to put cargo there so i need a flat deck so you make a deck you make the frames and the last part okay this is not actual practically it will work but theoretically last part is putting the plating plating is just like you know a paper like a wrap around that is the plating is the last ship is made out of frames you make a strong piece and plating is put to make it watertight got it everybody got it let me hear some answers yes yes sir yeah always yes, remember sir. ship is made up of framing and the ship side plating or deck plating or uh, hull plating whatever plating is there it is to make it water tight it is just a body a skin you can call it a skin and it's like framing is like your bones so that keeps your structure so this is what happens during construction of the ship if you remember fine like i told you don't forget it's fine because the next stage when you start doing uh, construction you will find that uh, this is what is followed but in real life now on books you will think that you make the framing first and on today the technology has changed so much it is it modular technology so you make the sections of the ship and you keep on joining so there is parallel job going on all over you decide that ship will be made in say 10 module so 10 different teams are working they make it so that the time is fast otherwise what happens sequential methods take too long and then you bring it together and join you know you can even make them in two different shipyard bring them together at sea and weld it and make a single ship it the ships were made like that once upon a time a lot of experiments were done now we are at 40 we will just open the next one hmm How did it jump here? Okay, this is how going to be. Hey, how did it change? Shouldn't have changed anyway. Let me see why it is showing something little weird. Okay, now we just finish this one. Okay, we finish this one. Correct. Now we are going to move to the next one. Hey, sorry. My navigation is little different than what you get yours. Cargoes and ships. Okay, now. Okay, today we will not go ahead. because cargoes and ship is made in a little different way as a lesson okay now what happens is on uh, module model i have got a lot of options how to give the presentation i can make it like ppt i can give it as a text i can give downloadable file and so on now cargoes and ships is designed as a lesson where you know you do one or two paragraphs 
stop ask questions you get correct answer then only you can go to the next one or else you go back to the previous one this is also one of the experiments i wanted to check with you because i personally feel for a 18 year old one this may not be a matured idea but i said i will make one so this is what is made if you can test it out on your own nothing like it but we will be doing it in classroom anyway but some of you if you can test it on own then we will know efficiency of it that can you understand without my presence or how much uh, help you need from me like that so that over a period you i told you two and a half years you are not going to need any one of us we are totally independent okay now this is a test and this is the lesson and then there is a video on different types of cells you know it is small videos basically attention span is also restricted when then we finish the types of ships now types of ships is basically to understand cargoes who carries which cargoes okay otherwise you can't say liquid cargo oh roro ship no that is what we are balancing what is roro ship carries this cargo what is tanker carries this cargo okay some uh, interesting things for you to discuss because some of you must be getting questions from friends and parents and you know, all something or some relatives you know not so much from parents probably uh, what all ships carry you know cargoes like i told you other day uh, orange juice is also carry the specially designed ships they carry orange juice in fact there is a huge Uh, factories are there in brazil and all they carry it to canada from there it gets packaged and distributed all over in usa it goes like this vegetables fresh fruits and all it's all normal to carry but uh, in liquids when you talk edible oil is carried by ship those are specially made ships for edible oil then like uh, i told you oranges i also know i also know a ship which was designed to carry wine just imagine full wine and of course before somebody asked the special because it was asked in the past what about beer and all no normally no today anyway the liquid cargoes also are going in tank so very few specialist liquid carriers are left and only very specific ones like you know this edible oil because what happen it goes to there are processing units for edible oil so we have got ships going there discharging large parcel 50000 tons which is processed further and then it is bottled and sold like it happens in mundra in india in mumbai it happens edible oil i don't know any other parts of india there must be some more uh before this job i was in charge of a container freight station in mumbai my uh, i left my retired sort of uh, left my job because it became boring anyway to get in teaching that time i was senior vice president of uh, jm bakshi group so there what was under me i had uh, like you know a unit with fairly large number of people you know and uh, you always get these inspectors you know we used to store containers then uh, stuff containers unstuffed containers then the deliveries were made and that is how the goods went all over refrigerated cargoes etc so one day i was just observing so i found what a sudden the security guy ekdam giving kadak salute to somebody who walked in so and then he accompanied him i was impressed very really, what is it who is this guy how comes i don't know the guy you get this food inspectors and all so you now whatever the imports are there they especially edible ones they are checked first in laboratories and certified fit for human consumption then only uh, you can use it so kadak salute and all guy went with him and all on the 
Chennai called my manager. I asked him, what is that? I saw one guy going there and all. So he told me, sir, who Fasai card me. Fasai means the food and all. There is a stamp you will find on all the food parcels. Fasai, F-A-S-A-I. So, what is it? Why so, such a great treatment for this guy? You also get other guy coming for refer cargoes and all, checking apples and all. So, no, no, this is because we have got some whiskey. It was uh, black dog or some whiskey was there. And, uh, you know, each container, it was like a tank, uh, about 20,000 liters in each. So, this guy had come to take the sample. So, what he is going to do, he is going to verify the seal number on the wall. Then he will open it, take the sample and take it to the lab. Of course, after taking a lab, they will test little bit and rest, they will drink anything. But since the watchman used to give him special treatment by saluting and all, watchman used to carry one bottle with him, empty bottle, and then this guy used to take his sample first, then he will give a smile, fill up bottle for watchman and give it to watchman. Watchman was happy. So the cargoes are like that, you know, you get all types of cargoes. Beers also come like that. And then they go to processing units where they are processed further and all and then bottled and all and then it is sold. Practically everything is carried as a cargo. Okay, now you tell me any doubts. Now talk yes, freely. So can you please explain about propeller? Huh? Sir, please explain about propeller. No, no, talk louder. My volume is full. Sir, can you please explain about propeller? Propeller will come back again. Don't worry. You are not going to go anywhere without propeller. Propeller is like a fan. See the way. Your simple fan. Okay, the vertical axis. Uh, not the one ceiling fan. I am talking about the sideway fans. Okay. The pedestal fans. How it happens is there is a fan moving, blade is moving and you get wind. Right? I get the breeze created. That's what I am having right now. Now, something like this. Correct? I will show you. Something like this. Correct? Now what happens is if it is pushing air here towards my hand, it has to take air from this side so it takes it. The ship's propeller is same. Okay. Let's see if you can see it. I don't know. Yes, sir. We can see. But this outer casing is not there. Okay. I don't have blade to show you. So this is how the propeller is connected to the ship. This is axis which is connected. Now, normally it will be connected to a motor. Correct. Instead of motor, there it is connected to the engine inside the ship. So, it sucks the water from this side and throws it out this side. Now, that is exactly what Mr. Newton told us, right? Newton's law, third law, remember? How many of you remember Newton's third law? Action and reaction? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every action yes, sir. has an equal huh. and opposite reaction. Yeah, yes, it sir. is opposite yeah, and with the same, uh, what is the magnitude, na? Magnitude, yes, sir. Correct. Now, what happens when we use the fan? You create the reaction, but fan is simply too heavy, so fan doesn't move and you get some breeze. In case of the ship, the power is such that we create the reaction which is strong enough to move the ship. Got it? Yes, sir. Thank you. Got it, na? Yes, sir. 